Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Langley City Mayor Val Vanderbrook, and I'd like to call the January 11th, 2021 regular council meeting to order and begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Kitsi, Kwantlen, Masqui, and Semiamu First Nations. And I understand that we have some members of the public in attendance possibly today to watch the proceedings. So welcome if you are here. And just a reminder to keep your mics and your camera turned off while you are in attendance. Thank you. So some introductions with me this afternoon. I have Councillor Paul Albrecht, Councillor Terry James, Councillor Gail Martin, Councillor Nathan Pahal, Councillor Rudy Storteboom, and Councillor Rosemary Wallace. And for staff this afternoon, we have Francis Chung, our Chief Administrative Officer, Darren Light, our Director of Corporate Services, Carl Johansson, our Director of Development Services, Rick Baumhoff, our Director of Engineering, Parks and Environment, Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture and Community Services, Kelly Kenny, our Corporate Officer, and Scott Kennedy, our Acting Fire Chief. So thanks everyone for being here. Start off with the adoption of the February 8th, 2021 regular agenda. Any additions or changes to the agenda? See none, mover and a seconder. Councillor James, Councillor Startaboom, any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. So we have a committee of the whole meeting and it provides council the opportunity to hear input from the public and allows council a greater opportunity to speak and debate specific agenda items. That uh, the motion forward is that council commence the committee of the whole. Need a mover and a seconder on that. I have Wallace and Hall. And um, I believe Mr. Light, do you have Another presentation. Yes, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> Let me just share my screen. That's appropriate. Okay, and it's bylaw 3151 2021 to 2025 financial plan bylaw. Great. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Uh, tonight we're we are talking about our 2021 financial plan or this afternoon, I should say. Um, this year is going to be a little bit different from other years uh, because we are in COVID-19 uh, pandemic and we recognize that there's still much uncertainty regarding 2021 and how it'll unfold. We believe that the budget that we're presenting today will try to find a balance between supporting our community during the pandemic and moving forward with um, the exciting plans that we've outlined in our Nexus of Community Plan in preparation for the eventual arrival of the SkyTrain to Langley City. I'm going to start the presentation by touching on the capital improvement plan and then moving into a discussion on the operating side of the budget. In the capital improvement plan, we have $18.8 million in capital projects itemized. Um, the capital projects are funded by a variety of sources. As you can see here, we've got reserves, development cost charges, grants from senior levels of government, casino proceeds, <clears throat> borrowing, and the community amenity charge. So a big change this year is that, uh, as you know, the casino is closed due to the pandemic. Um, so this year we're conservatively estimating that we're not going to receive any funding from the casino in 2021. Um, and we'll be looking at using the $4.2 million that we got for the safe restart grant to fund the operating expenditures that are usually funded by casino proceeds around $800,000. Last year at this time, uh, we were anticipating that we would be borrowing $50 million in order to um, advance the nexus of community plan. However, um, due to COVID, we, we uh, put that on pause for the year. And this year, what we're planning to do is just borrow $7.5 million um, in order to do some strategic land purchases. The debt servicing cost for this borrowing that will be repaid over 15 years um, is it requires a 1.93% overall tax increase. It's felt that this level of borrowing will balance um, the need to move forward on the Nexus plan and still being mindful of the financial burden our taxpayers are currently facing. Some of the larger projects in our capital plan include the $7.5 million that I just talked about for land acquisition, 
as well as there's a fire truck uh, being purchased, a number of paving projects, uh, a large city park field project, and some larger water and sewer projects. Now switching into the operating side of our budget, in 2021, the financial plan includes $50 million in operating expenditures. Approximately 82% of the operating expenditures are funded through property taxation and utility charges, which will be billed at the end of May, um, which are done every year that way. Um, to keep the same level of service that we had in 2020, um, the taxation revenues will have to increase 2.75%. And then you add in the debt servicing costs for the additional borrowing that we talked about earlier, it's another 1.93%. So overall, our tax revenue increase in order to balance our budget is about $1.4 million or 4.68%. Some of the larger uh, revenue decreases that we've seen um, in 2020 compared to 2021, um, we have a number of appeals that uh, BC Assessment Authority has presented to us where taxpayers can appeal the property assessment that they have on their properties. That reduced our taxation revenue by $165,000. Uh, we know that interest income, the interest rates have dropped significantly over 2020, and we're seeing a reduction in what we anticipate to get for interest income that we use to op for our operating funds of $168,000. And then the gaming proceeds I've already mentioned. Some of our larger wages or larger expenditures relate to our wages and benefits for our staff who provide the services that we provide in the city. Um, so we're seeing an increase of about $205,000 there. On the RCMP side, the largest piece of our budget is uh, an increase of six hundred and almost $50,000. Um, and that uh, allows for uh, 51.35 RCMP members in our contract strength. Utility charges are going up. Uh, single family residential garbage is going up uh, $6 per single family home. Our water rate is based on consumption, so it's going up nine cents per cubic meter and the sewer rate six cents per cubic meter. And that's to buy water from the Greater Vancouver Water District and to utilize the services of the Greater Vancouver Sewage and Drainage District to dispose of our waste. So the borrowing impact, uh, as I mentioned before, is 1.93%. Our general tax increase, 2.75. We are not anticipating any service level increments for a total annual increase of 4.68%. This is a bit of a busy slide, uh, but in the first quadrant here is a single family homes. So how that 4.68% uh, plays out is basically $154 increase for a single family home, uh, about $90 increase for a strata property on this side. On the average business property, we'll see a 3.85% increase and the average light industrial property is about 5.05% increase. And that's what I wanted to bring to your attention today, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that there might be. Great, thank you, Mr. Light. Um, seeing I don't believe there's any members of the public, Ms. Kenny, has there been any correspondence received regarding this bylaw? No, Madam Mayor. And there are no mem members of the public in attendance, correct? So seeing no speakers, are there any questions from council? I see Councillor Martin has her hand raised and then Council. Yes, Councillor Martin, go ahead. Thank you very much. Darren, I was just curious. Uh, I noticed when we did the open house the other night, there was um, $80,000 earmarked for Christmas decorations for McBurney Plaza. Um, it was beautiful this year. I'm just wondering what $80,000 is going to bring us next year or this year. Sorry, how can you respond to that? Um, I don't have this particular details of, of the enhancements, but it was really to provide a bigger, um, you know, a light, more lighting on the one way, more lighting in McBurney and as well as in Douglas Park. So it would stretch into those areas, not just in McBurney. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it was just a little confusing. I thought it was a lot of money just for one, one location. Thank right. you. Okay, anybody else? 
Any questions? I don't see any hand raised. So I think that's good. Thank you, Mr. Light. So with that, that um, for the motion, that committee of the whole rise in the report. Mover and a seconder, Councillor Bahal, Councillor Stortaboom, all those in favor? Carries. Okay, on to regular meeting minutes from January 25th, 2021. And the minutes of the regular meeting held on January 25th, 2021 be adopted as circulated. Any corrections or errors? Seeing none, need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor James, Councillor Stortaboom. Um, all those in favor? And opposed, that carries. Public hearing minutes from January 25th, 2021, that the minutes of the public hearing held on January 25th, 2021 be adopted as circulated. Can you move on a seconder, please? Councillor Sturdeboom, Councillor Albrecht, any discussion, public hearing? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed, that carries. Moving on to business arising from the Committee of the Whole, Bylaw 3151, 2021 to 2025 Financial Plan Bylaw, third reading of a bylaw to adopt the financial plan for 2021 to 2025, that the bylaw cited as the financial plan 2021 to 2025 bylaw 2021, number 3151, be read a third time. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Bahal, Councillor James, any discussion? I know we've talked about this a lot. So, <laughs> okay, seeing nobody's hands up, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries. So moving on to the mayor's report, upcoming meetings. The next regular council meeting is February 22nd, 2021. The next regular council meeting after that is March 8th, 2021. Next up, we have library happenings with Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you very much. So Fraser Valley Regional Library staff are thrilled to have launched the first phase of our live interactive programming on Zoom. Upcoming virtual programs include a knitting circle, <clears throat> book discussion groups, ukulele jams, and even a fun spelling challenge for adults. Our very popular re-recorded virtual story times and baby times continue to be posted regularly, so there's fun for the whole family. The uh, City of Langley is proud to partner in the Langley Literacy Network's Family Scavenger Hunt. This is a fun way to celebrate Family Literacy Day, Valentine's Day, and Family Day together. Families can print the sheet online or pick one up at the library. They complete as many activities as they can and bring to any Fraser Valley. You can bring to any Fraser Valley Regional Library location in Langley before Saturday, February the 20th. The first 500 children to turn in their sheets will receive a free book. And Fraser Valley Regional Library's 1,000 stories before kindergarten program is back and it's better than ever now with online registration and a monthly early literacy newsletter. Thousand Stories Before Kindergarten is a self-paced program for parents with young children. Parents can track their child's reading progress throughout their first years of life and children receive stickers and prizes as they advance. Reading regularly with children supports brain development and strengthens parent-child relationships. And from Hogwarts to Galaxy Far, Far Away, and whether it's movies, books, games, or podcasts, we're all fans of something. Tell us your favorite fandoms and why you love them for a chance to win prizes. Grand prize winner and runner-up are chosen by random draw, and entries are shareable to get referrals which go towards the People's Choice Award, Live Long and Prosper. And last uh, but not least is explore the list of Canadian adult, teen and children's books that have been challenged by individual groups. I might also mention that um, starting February the 22nd, we are going to extend the hours of our libraries uh, from 10 till six instead of 10 till five. And that will be from Monday to Thursday. So you can look forward to that on February the 22nd. Thank you very much. Great. Thank
Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Councillor James. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's more of a comment. Um, I just wanted to thank Councillor Martin for her outstanding representation of us on the Fraser Valley Regional Library Board. Um, she, her reports are always insightful and very informative. And I also realized or just was informed that she's recently been reelected as the chair of the board again. So I just want to extend my congratulations. Thank you very much, Terry. Well, congratulations on that. That's always nice to know, Councillor Pahal. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, it's good to hear, Councillor Martin. Uh, just a quick question. And if you don't have the answer right now, that's fine. Um, are, is the library looking at slowly getting back to the normal hours? Because I, with this extension to 6 p.m., are they looking to get back to the normal? Is it 9 p.m. normally? I think you're on mute, Councillor Martin. I can't hear you, Councillor Martin. You're on mute. Talking away to myself here. <laughs> yeah, sir. Yeah, uh, traditionally we have been open on Sundays at the Langley City Library, as have other libraries. And we do normally go till nine uh, during Monday to Thursday. So this is a start of kind of extending the hours a little bit. It helps people. Um, I think a lot of people were having problems getting to the library by five o'clock. So we are extending it another hour. And I'm sure in the future, as time goes along, we'll get back to normal as we all hope to get back to normal. Uh, thank you, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any other hands raised. All right, thank you for that. Next up, we have the engineering update with Rapam Mahath, our in Director of Engineering Parks and Environment. All right, thank you very much. I'll just share my screen. <clears throat> All right, so update for February, 2021. Uh, this is a picture of the city park shelters. Um, it's, uh, it's actually a little bit further along now again. However, as you can see, the structures are all up and the slabs are poured. The walkways are also set, the, the paved uh, walkways. Uh, the only thing that's really remaining is the grass uh, around uh, the soil around the concrete slabs. So that will be seeded. And the target is to have them opened, uh, the fences removed um, at the same time as the water park. Everything is opened up at the park. So that would be in May. Uh, we might be able to open it up sooner, but uh, that's uh, what, uh, in, in discussion with our parks manager, that's the goal at this stage. This is a shot of uh, some anti-slip treads that we've added to McBurney Plaza decking in light of uh, some, uh, the, the wood has become uh, fairly slippery. So this is in response to that. And I think it's uh, actually uh, turned out quite nicely as far as aesthetics goes as well. We've also replaced uh, the doors at um, Portage Park washrooms. Uh, as you uh, will remember, there was some vandalism there and we've now reverse the opening of the doors so that it makes it much more difficult for people to, to uh, break into. This is a picture of a couple of major tree falls in the city. One is at City Park and the other is at uh, Sendal Gardens. Uh, some recent uh, heavy winds that we've had, also some ground saturation, which you can see on the, on the first picture on the left, a big root ball came up with the tree. And um, the next shot I'll show you, it just shows uh, some, the branches of this first tree <coughs> will be used for railing in, within Sendal Park. And this is a picture here, so on the right side, these are those branches debarked and they, they'll be used to create railing along these granite stairway, the granite stairway that we built down by the creek area. Also just to note that the holiday lights will stay up until the week of February 15th. 
So as you know, we, we left the lights intentionally a little bit longer this year is to spread a little bit of joy and cheer for, the, for this uh, season uh, during this COVID time. We have had some comments and questions about um, when will they will be removed. So I thought I'd just add it as uh, next week we'll, we'll begin removing uh, and it'll be completed by the end of next week. This is a shot of uh, sidewalk uh, improvement at the corner of 56th and the bypass. It was just uh, becoming overgrown and the sidewalk was quite narrow there. So it's an enhancement, a little more space for pedestrians and creates a little, it's a little more open from a septed uh, safety perspective as well. And the city has an annual water meter replacement program and this is one of the larger water meters being replaced uh, to one of our commercial uh, customers. And this shot is of um, a new wrap that's been installed on one of our kiosks at the corner of 204th Street and 53rd Avenue. It, it, it helps with any uh, graffiti or anything like that. It's a lot easier to clean off. And it's also it actually reduces um, the likelihood of graffiti when it's, it's got a little bit more pictures, artistic and this to it that uh, people tend to stay away from it. Uh, this is a picture of a new chlorine, chlorine analyzer uh, that's been installed at the reservoir site. This gives us more accurate data and also um, connects to our SCADA system, which is our computer operated and control system that uh, links to that so their operators can view all of this information on their computers at their desktop. This is a shot at the reservoir as well, uh, just uh, control valve maintenance. So these are the control valves that control water going out into the different zones within the city, um, just ensuring that the right volumes and, um, and pressures are, are going out into the system. And lastly, this is a shot of the bridge just to the south of Portage Park being removed temporarily to be maintained and repainted and brought back out within, within the next uh, about five to six week time period. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mr. Baumhoff. You and your staff are doing great work because normal. I love the recycling. <laughs> and I myself am leaving my Christmas lights up at my house until the end of February and a bunch of other people are in our neighborhood. So um, good job on that. Uh, Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks for your report, uh, Mr. Baumhoff. Uh, just a couple of questions. The picnic shelters, um, they're going to be fantastic. I was under the impression there was going to be three. It looks like there's two. Uh, no, there are three. There are three, you can only see the two. I'll just bring it. Yeah, it might be a little bit hard to see on that one shot. Okay. Um, you'll so see, the other, yeah. There's there's one in the front here, one here, and then the one in the back is, is right. Can you? Can yeah, you I wondered this? if that was the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, yeah. great. Thank you very much. Um, in regards to the Christmas decorations, um, that that's fine. Are we gonna keep like, lights on at all uh, other than Christmas decorations? Uh, sorry, uh, all of the Christmas decorations will be removed and right. uh, it'll just be the standard that, you know, post top lights will be remain. Okay. Okay. It would be nice to leave some of the white lights up maybe in Innes Plaza or at City Hall, but that's, that's fine. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Wallace. Well, oh, sorry, uh, Ken. Uh, sorry, when you mentioned Innes, I, uh, Innes, the, the oak trees, we are actually leaving those lights up in the branches. Oh, great. So those those trees uh, will have lights remaining in them, and we can turn them on at for different occasions. We won't have them on permanently, but they they can be turned on. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I have Councillor Wallace and Councillor Pahal and then Councillor Albrecht. Thank you. Um, I know a, 
um, Nathan, thank you for letting me go before you. I think you were up before me, but thank you. <laughs> um, I'm just, uh, thank you for your report. I love the idea of the recycling of the wood or upcycling of the wood and in a needed uh, space as well. And I think that will create safety in where the, the railings are going to be put. Um, the picnic shelters at uh, City Park um, are going to be um, a welcomed addition. That park, it seems to be, there are more people playing at that park or, or kids playing at that park. It's, it seems to be used a lot. Um, and my question in regards to the Portage Park, I mean, the Portage Park um, bridge that is being, it's not being replaced or are the railings being painted and refurbished and is the actual grounding of the bridge itself, is that how is it going to be? I was un under the understanding that that was going to be replaced. Yeah, all of the decking will be replaced as well as uh, all the old paint will be blast and blasted off and repainted. And it was just too difficult of a job to do that uh, over the river mm -hmm. so without, without causing environmental concerns. So that's why it has to be removed. Okay, thank you. And then as far as McBurney Plaza, I just wanna commend uh, the city for listening to the public's concerns and about the safety. So thank you. Absolutely, thank you. And, and also on the note on the um, reusing the branches from the tree, um, that it really came from the park staff. So they're really seeing those kind of things as it happens and, and so-called, I guess, turning lemonade, lemons into lemonade. Mm -hmm. So it, um, it's really great to see staff coming up with those ideas and, and uh, being innovative, I guess, in that way. Awesome. Great, thank you. Councillor Pahal. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Mr. Baumhoff, just to follow up to the bridges, uh, is, is the decking wood again, or will it be metal? Uh, it will be wood. Okay. Yeah. I guess my follow up to that is, um, will you be considering the same sort of anti-slip treatment as McBurney Plaza? Uh, I will need to get back to you on that. That's, that's a good point. I, I wasn't sure if that was a similar kind of concern on, on the bridges, but... Uh, so uh, I mean, it looks, um, it looks like it is. So, so my, myself personally, I've definitely, as I'm out in the early morning with the frost, and so when it gets that wet slick there, it's uh, quite slippery, and I've definitely had a dozen or so near misses. So okay, uh, we'll we'll make sure it has uh, slip resistant surface on it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bomba. Uh That's it. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Councillor Pahal. Try pulling an 80 pound Doberman over that too when it's frosty. You're absolutely right. Councillor Albrecht. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Baumhoff. Um, yeah, I really, uh, really appreciate staff taking the initiative to, uh, to repurpose those trees, uh, use them for railings. I think that's a, a creative way, and I, I think uh, it's. It's important to uh, recognize uh, that and uh, please pass along uh, uh, my appreciation to staff for that. Um, I, and I really like the initiative taken uh, to do the pedestrian uh, access improvements. Uh, I think those types of small things uh, can uh, add a lot to, uh, to our community. And again, I, take, uh, uh, I, I just wanna say thank you for that, taking that initiative. And um, the wraps on those boxes, I'm always amazed at how good they look. They always look good. They blend right in and they, they almost make it invisible. So uh, yeah, the, the more wraps we can get on those boxes, the better. And then uh, just to, to echo everybody else on the McBurney uh, uh, treatment there, I think that looks good. Uh, we'll see how it uh, stands up and, and how it performs, but uh, hopefully it will be um, well, it's going to be better than it was, that's for sure. So uh, thanks to, uh, to you and your staff. Thank you. Great. Anyone else with any questions? Don't see any more hands raised. So thank you, Mr. Baumhoff. Okay, on to bylaw 3146, the official community plan amendment bylaw. 
third reading of a bylaw to amend Langley or City of Langley Official Community Plan Bylaw 2005. Number 2600, 20689, and 20699 East Lee Crescent. Motion forward is that the bylaw cited as City of Langley Official Community Plan Bylaw 2005, number 2600, Amendment number 11, 2020, number 3146, be read a third time. I need a mover and a second, mover, please. Councillor Stortaboom, Councillor James, any discussion? See none, call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Carries. Bylaw 3147, uh, Zoning Amendment and Development Permit Number 05-20. Third reading of a bylaw to rezone properties located at 20689 and 20699 East Lee Crescent to accommodate a six-story 88-unit apartment development. Motion forward is that the bylaw cited as the zoning bylaw 1996, number 2100, amendment number 171 2020, number 3147, be read a third time. Any mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Sturdivant, Councillor Albrecht, any discussion on that? Councillor Bahal, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. To staff, uh, I just have three questions that I'm hoping. So I'll just answer uh, or ask, sorry. <laughs> Uh, all three of them, and then we can get a response. Uh, so the first one is, will this uh, section of street, once it's done, have a traditional curb and gutter? Uh, that's a full curb and gutter. Uh, the second question is, and I guess for context, will it be different than what you would find currently on the, I guess, west side of Eastley Crescent? Uh, and then the second and third question are, Will there be a traffic management plan and will there be a parking management plan uh, to ensure that uh, residents on that street will be able to get to their residence uh, and that trades uh, won't be parked all up and down the street? And how will we be enforcing that? Uh, that's it, thank you. Uh, yes, through the mayor to Councillor Bohal, yes, there will be uh, Typically before construction starts, there's a construction management plan uh, that needs to be submitted and approved. And uh, as noted during the public hearing, the applicant will be uh, required to have uh, trades parking uh, off street. And in terms of the, uh, the streetscaping standard on Eastley, uh, it would include a 1.8 uh, meter wide sidewalk and uh, your typical barrier curb and gutter and uh, um, usually the usual stuff to match up with what's happening on the, on the south side of Eastley. Uh, if I may follow up to the mayor, uh, the, I guess sort of the challenge we see on the uh, like west side or southwest side is it's that shallow curb. Uh, and I've just noticed that people are parking on the sidewalk. So I'm wondering if we could prevent that by using the more traditional uh, full um, curb and that we're being explicit about that on Eastley. Yeah, I'll defer to the uh, Director of Engineering Parks and Environment, but I believe it is a, a full curb. Yes, and uh, our Hirad Gill is here as well. And uh, if, if, um, if I'm incorrect in this Hirad, please speak up. But my understanding is it will be a full barrier curb on this side of the street. In the, in the previous, on the south, um, south side of the road, that was our old standard and um, it was a rollover curb and that, that's what's causing the issue with cars parking along that section. But on this side, it will be a full barrier curb and cars will be very much less uh, likely to do that uh, kind of uh, uh, movement. Uh, that's great to hear. So I'm, I'm happy that we're doing that and I'm happy to hear that we'll have a parking uh, management plan and a, uh, I guess a plan for construction uh, vehicles as well um, as they're going in and out. But I guess the other question is for um, residents, if they do notice activities, uh, what should they do? Should they contact the bylaw department, the RCMP, if they're seeing vehicles parked, uh, you know, on a Saturday, for example, or a Sunday? Uh, yes, through the mayor to Councilor Pahal. Um, as was noted in the public hearing, the the demo, de, excuse me, the developer contractor will have signage on site 
uh, that will enable members of the public to directly contact them uh, uh, with uh, concerns. And of course, the, the city uh, will also have uh, contact information. And you know, when, when we're asking the developer to park uh, their vehicles uh, off street, uh, we're serious about it. And uh, uh, we're confident that uh, the developers will, uh, will adhere to that. And if there's any issues, uh, we'll follow up with them uh, with, with bylaw. And uh, I don't know if the uh, Director of Engineering, Parks and Environment has any follow up on that, but, but that would be my sense. And uh, moving forward, our, as part of our application process, that's something that's gonna be identified with uh, prospective developers up front. Uh, that's gonna be the expectation uh, that they provide off street parking for their trades. Otherwise it's gonna become a problem. Thank you very much. Great questions. Okay, anybody wants any hands? So I will call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Carries. Okay, on to Fraser River Waterfront Revitalization Initiative. I believe Mr. Chung, do you have? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just very quickly, um, as you know, uh, we receive a delegation last, at the last council meeting from the Surrey Board of Trade, uh, asking council for support to participate in the, the South Fraser River Revitalization Strategy Project and seeking funding from council for support. Um, while the initiative is sound to create an overall strategy for the Fraser River uh, in terms of economic growth and recovery, uh, there have been a number of studies done by Metro Vancouver and many of those have touched upon the Fraser Valley as a whole. And recognizing that, you know, we're in the midst of completing our, our OCP, our Nicomeco River District Plan and zoning bylaw, and being a member of Metro Vancouver, which we will continue to participate on those strategies. We want to uh, allocate resources where that are most advantageous for us. And that's to continue to focus on our plan and support the Metro Vancouver whenever, wherever necessary. So from that perspective, um, our staff recommendation is to decline to participate with, the, with this initiative at this time. And given that we don't have any funding allocated towards this project, again, uh, our staff is recommending that we decline uh, offering any funding at this time for this initiative. Thank you. Okay, uh, any comments or questions, Councillor Martin? I'd like to move the recommendations one and two. All second. Okay. Uh, any discussion on it? No discussion. Councillor Wallace. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you for your report, Francis. And and I agree. Um, and I just how how will we reply to them in our reply to back to the. The initiative like we're just not going to do it is that our reply or that we're just like your comments we were working with metro vancouver or we're part of metro vancouver so they'll receive a letter like that uh through madam mayor to uh council wallace yes we're explaining to them the rationale for not uh, participating at this time in a letter format thank you okay anybody else i will go to say um can we i guess I was gonna ask the um, corporate officer if we could split the vote. Uh, certainly not a fair. Um, okay, so I'm gonna call the vote. And the reason why I asked this is for my own personal reason, because from my understanding, uh, we could participate with donating without donating financially. And I think we should still participate. I think it's important to be part of the region and the rebuilding of the Fraser River because it does affect us and our economies and businesses in the city. So um, I will call the vote on the first motion that the city council decline the request from the Surrey Board of Trade to participate in the Fraser River Revitalization Project Working Group at this time. So I'll call the vote on that. All those in favor? Any opposed? And I am opposed. Okay, 
Uh, second motion is that City Council decline the request from Surrey Board of Trade to contribute financially towards the Fraser River Waterfront Revitalization Project budget. All those in favor? Any opposed? All right, Mike carries. All right, moving on, light it up policy change requests. This is a motion from me, uh, Mayor Vandenbroek. So there are a number of occasions throughout the year for which the city receives requests to light up outdoor landmarks, bridges, buildings, stadiums, and other illuminated um, locations with various colors of lights, depending on the occasion. So some examples would be International uh, Overdose Awareness Day, which is purple, Children's Grief Awareness Day, which is blue, uh, Orange for uh, World Day for activism against gender-based violence, and World Thinking Day celebrated by Girl Guides, which is blue. So currently staff treat these requests as they would handle requests for proclamations, which is our policy number CO-73. So respectfully noting that while we do not light up for these occasions, we will be, um, I think this is an opportunity to promote this. So, and it's come to my attention that the light system at the Spirit Square has the capacity to be lit up in any color combination. And it's on a timer system. So minimal resources um, are required except setting the timer and general maintenance. And since we've had such good reviews on um, the Christmas lights and the lights downtown, um, I thought this would be another way to light up the city and raise some awareness. And I thought we could also in, um, include the information on why we're doing a blue um, on the reader board at Douglas Recreation Center. So I just thought this might be an appropriate time to bring this to council. So the motion for it is that staff be directed to um, prepare a report to council on implementation of a policy for the use of the Spirit Square lighting system in responding to requests to the city to light up outdoor city locations in recognition of various causes and occasions. So I will move that if somebody wants to second it. Councillor Paul, any discussion on that? Councillor Martin. Yes, uh, to, to Mr. Chung, um, where did these requests go to? Because I, I don't recall ever seeing any requests for light up. So did they just go to staff or just, just curious? Uh, through Madam Mayor to Council Martin. Yes, usually the requests probably come through uh, the executive assistant to the mayor. And then she would discuss it with um, uh, probably myself or um, Miss Kenny, and then uh, we'll, we'll take the appropriate action. Uh, but given that we have a, a policy not to proclaim any uh, events at this point, uh, so we have so far been declining uh, the request to light up uh, what the city hall to a specific color related to the campaign. So will the report state how many requests we get in a year? Uh, through the Madam Mayor to Council Martin, yes, we would um, look at that, see how many requests per year and uh, and also from a legal perspective, uh, whether we are going to be contravening any uh, human rights um, policy by uh, recognizing some events and not others. Uh, as council is well aware, uh, we just uh, came out from uh, human rights tribunal uh, investigation for the rainbow flag, and uh, and uh, I guess the, the the good part was that we do have a policy in place which uh, was really greatly able, allow us to defend our, our case. So whatever we do moving forward with uh, the lights up, we need to have a, a very solid uh, policy to protect the city from potential any human rights complaint. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I, I guess I, I'm just a, a little confused, like we're tying this in with proclamations. I mean, we don't do proclamations now. And so we're tying this in with, with proclamations or, or uh, through the madam, um, through, through the madam mayor's to Council Warren. Uh, no, I think we are probably going to have a different policy. I was just referencing that we do have a policy, right, or proclamation at this point, and we have been using that um, as a rationale for not lighting up for any different events. But we're probably going to come up with either a separate policy or, 
or based on legal advice, um, whether we should have it with the, the proclamation uh, policy. So we're not sure at this point, we have to seek some legal advice. Okay. Thank you very much. Great, thanks, Councillor Uh Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, um, I, I'm definitely supportive of a uh, report uh, on how we would implement this. So uh, I'll be supportive of this motion. And I think uh, we have now a good example of a rock solid policy when it comes to these in so far as our flag policy, uh, as uh, Mr. Chung said. So um, I would just hope that uh, as you're developing this, I guess the flag policy and, and would be a good place to start. Um, so I'll just leave it there. Thank you. Anyone else? Comments or questions or? Nope, seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Oh, so that carries, thank you very much. Okay, uh, on to new business. Uh, release a motion from closed meeting. The following motion was approved for public release at the January 25th, 2021 regular or closed meeting that council appoint the following people to the respective board task group or committee for the ind indicated term. Board of Variance, three-year term, Evan Williams. Environmental Task Group, a one-year term, Lisa Stevens. Crime Prevention Task Group, one-year term, Nadia Gugabora and Alan Yurrata. Arts and Culture Task Group, one-year term, Michael Paler. Youth Advisory Committee, one-year term, Mary Ann Brody and Avery Peru. So we have a motion to go into a closed meeting that the council meeting immediately following this meeting be closed to the public as the subject matter being considered relates to items which comply with the following closed meeting criteria specified in section 90 of the community charter. One, a part of a council meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to or is one of the more of the following litigation or potential litigation affecting the municipality, information that is prohibited or information that if it were presented in a document would be prohibited from disclosure under section 21 of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. Negotiations and related discussions respecting the provised provision of a municipal service that are at their preliminary stages and that in view of the council, could reason reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality if it were held in public. Two, a part of council meeting must be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to one or more of the following. B, the consideration of information received and held in confidence relating to negotiations between the municipality and a provincial government or the federal government or both or between a provincial government or the federal government or both and a third party. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Stortapum, Councillor Albrecht, all those in favor, any opposed, that carries. Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor. Yes. I'm just aware that uh, the meeting actually starts at 4.30, the closed meeting. So council may wish to either will not be able to start the meeting until 4.30. So if council wishes, they would need to uh, pass a motion at this open meeting to um, wait to start that meeting earlier. That's, that's at the discretion of council. Which we have a guest, so we wouldn't be able to, is that correct? What council would need to do is if they wanted to start uh, the meeting earlier and deal with other items before that item, that that is a, uh, an ability to do that or otherwise to keep it simple just wait until 4 30. okay i was assuming we were going over to 4 30 for everything so that was my understanding because we have another link for the um private for the closed meeting correct that is correct yes okay so is everybody okay if we resume at 4 30. i'm getting nods of yes and do I have to adjourn the meeting first, Kelly? Yes, so you would just go forward with adjourning this meeting. Okay, 
Okay, so a motion is that the meeting adjourn. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Wallace, Councillor James. Um, all those in favor? All right, well, thank you for coming out this afternoon. We'll see you at 4.30 on the new link.